electronics paper of B.Sc. Physics program. And it is my honor to introduce you all to our resource person, Dr. Lakshmi N, Assistant Professor, Mercy Co Department of Physics, Mercy College, Palakkad. I welcome you, ma'am. And uh, Lakshmi has done her doctorate in, thin in the area of material science and thin films. And she is one of the efficient teachers in our in, uh, in the Institute of Mercy College. And uh, as a former student of Mercy College, uh, I can say that she was pretty popular among our students uh, for her lectures in the field of electronics, electronics lectures, actually. So uh, without further delay, I am um, handing over the session to Isak, sir. Welcome, uh, resource person. Thank you, Irfan. Thank you very much. Okay. Is it audible, Irfana? Yes, sir. It is audible. Okay. Actually, you all know that it's our 16th webinar talk series. So in last uh, sessions, we have handled different types of topics. And today's uh, it's very useful topic for our degree file year students. Electronics op-amp. It's, uh, we all know that Operation Amplifier performs a lot of mathematical operations such as additions, uh, multiplications, differentiation, integration. So this topic is very relevant and very important for the students of final year physics. That's why we've chosen this topic for this webinar series. So I uh, officially welcome uh, ma'am to the session. So, uh, ma'am, this, uh, this virtual platform is yours. Now you can start. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. And a special thanks to my dear student, Irfana, for the warm welcome. So, in this session, we plan to go about with PPT, PowerPoint, as well as a bit of practical side with a video included in for the practical side of OPAP. Then also... I'll be using the whiteboard for doing some derivations so that it will remain in your mind and will be easy for you to follow rather than a point presentation. Hope and pray it will go on well. So can we start, Ifana? Yes, ma'am. If Anna, if you are creating a YouTube link, please share it and just inform so that I can pass over to those who are asking. Some are asking me. Okay, sure. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So the topic of the day is operational amplifier. The simple and direct definition for this is operational amplifier is a direct coupled high gain voltage amplifier with differential input. Let's spend some time in understanding this definition. This is a versatile device. So First, we will see what is direct coupled. If you can remember, in multi-stage amplification, you would have gone through RC coupling, where you are using a R and C for coupling stage. That is, one stage is coupled with... Just a minute. Okay. One stage is coupled with the next stage through a resistance and capacitor, that is RC coupling. This is direct coupling and this is transformer coupling. In transformer coupling, the coupling of one stage to next stage is done through a transformer. And in direct coupling, you don't use any coupling device. And in fact, here, the R1, R2 and RE will be absent. 
So this is a direct coupling. So we are going to use this direct coupling method for our operational amplifier. Now the next point of highlight is high gain voltage amplifier. You know, an ordinary transistor like DC 107 or water waiters, it gives a gain, voltage gain of 300 or maximum 400 like that. Anyway, it is in the order of hundreds. But while coming to op-amp, it is possible to get an amplification of in the order of lakh, that is 1 into 10 raised to 5 orders. So that would mean it is a really good voltage. For example, if it is 10 raised to 5 and my input voltage is 1 millivolt, I'm going to get an output voltage of, say, 100 volt. That is, in fact, a magnificent value. Now, but one thing is noted is there is a limit to this output voltage. If I'm using a op amp called 741, IC 741, I cannot practically expect a voltage of 100 volt. Then where comes the restriction? The point to be noted is that your output voltage will always be restricted by the biasing supply that you are giving. That is, if you are giving a 15 volt biasing for your IZ, then you can only expect up to say 13 or 13.5 volt output. That is your output. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, you're doubling and a same day the television. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I'll use it. You can send it to the students. Okay, okay, thank you. So, I can limit, my output will be limited by the power supply that we give or the biasing that we give. So, if my biasing is 15 volt, I can only expect up to 13 or 13.5 volt output. There'll be some law, so you can only expect up to that. So though this equation of AV, this open loop gain will give you an output of 100 volt, practically you won't get it, or else it would have been very easy for matters. So that is about high gain voltage amplifier. Now let's come to the next point, differential input. What we mean by differential input is that if this is an op-amp, there are two inputs, V1 and V2. Actually, the real input to this op-amp is going to be V in us, V1 difference V2. So that is what is meant by differential input. The effective input is going to be difference between the voltage at V1 and V2. This is because the first stage of a differential amplifier of a op amp is a differential amplifier and it looks something like this. So there are two inputs, two bases for two transistors and this is your output. So this is the configuration of differential mode. So there is chance for two base input circuits. So once again, So I've given it figuratively, if V1 is say 3 microvolts and V2 is 2 microvolts, then effective V in would be V1 difference V2, that will be only 1 microvolt. Okay, this is a very appreciable phenomenon, very good property of different uh, OPAM. That is, suppose it won't, uh, I've got a signal from uh, RF signal, which is only in the order of microvolt. We'll take the same example, but if there is a noise of two microvolt, out of this three microvolt, two microvolt is going to be my noise. So my signal is only going to be one microvolt, but I cannot avoid it. I cannot avoid the noise. In such a situation, In such a situation, this differential mode is going to help us a lot. 
because this two volt noise will be present here as well as it will be present here. So it gets cancelled and what is going to be effectively here is only the signal of one microvolt. So by this differential mode, we can escape from the problem of noise or common mode signal, I would say. So I repeat it, operational amplifier is a direct coupled high gain voltage amplifier with differential input. Now I think you have understood half of OPAMP. Now, why is it called an OPAMP or operational amplifier? It's just because it is capable of doing many mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, differentiation, integration, finding logarithm, solving differential equations, and so on. And the other operations I would like to list is comparator, voltage follower, signal modulation, frequency filtering, voltage to current conversion, analog to digital signal conversion, and so on. So you can see how versatile this OPAMP is. Moving to the next slide. So this is a symbol of OPAMP. You give your biasing here, plus VCC and minus VCC. That is, you usually give dual biasing. Plus and minus. If this is plus 15 volt, this is minus 15 volt. Your differential input is V1 difference V2. So coming to the details, as we have already discussed, the first stage would be a differential amplifier. The first stage of OPAMP is a differential amplifier. Then there will be multi stages of amplification over here. And the last stage is usually class B amplifier. Hope you remember. Class C amplifier, class B means uh, you will get an output only for one half cycle of the input. So if it is in a push-pull arrangement, then the first half cycle will be given by one transistor and the complementary transistor will give you the other half cycle so that you will get uh, efficient output. Now let us see what are the characteristics. We have already mentioned the main characteristics that is, it gives high voltage gain. That is, ideally you say it is infinite gain, but you know practically it's not possible anyway. Then the second would be high input impedance. Ideally, infinite input impedance. Low output impedance, next advantage. There, you would say ideally it is zero output impedance. Let us see what is the significance of this impedance. I'll give you an idea of impedance matching. That is, if you have got a source here and the output Z out, output impedance of this source is 500 kilovolts. You want to connect this to an amplifier and then a load. The load is only 20 ohms. Let it be a loudspeaker or something. So I want to connect the source to the loudspeaker after amplification. But if I use a CE amplifier circuit here, let's see what's the situation. The input impedance of the CE amplifier, I would say, is around... Just a moment. The input impedance of C amplifier I have put as 500 ohms and output impedance as 500 kilo ohms. So according to the maximum power transfer theorem, maximum power will be transferred only if the output impedance of the source matches with the output input impedance of the load. That is, 
this load and this load only if it matches it will transfer maximum power from here to here i'll repeat maximum power will be transferred from one circuit to another only if their impedance match this is a power maximum power transfer theorem we can also understand it with equations i'm not going into it at present anyway so you can see 500 kilo ohms and 500 ohms it doesn't match it is not the same order here also 500 kilo ohms and 20 ohms it doesn't match it so you cannot expect an efficient power transfer from the source to this load even if you do your amplification so in such case if i'm replacing the c amplifier with a op amp amplifier then this op amp i discussed it as it has a high input impedance and a low output impedance so i put it as 1000k and 100 ohm just for an example you can take it high and low so if the c amplifier is replaced by this op amp what do you think 500k matches with 1000k more comfortably it's the same order then 100 ohms match with 20 ohms so again that is going to be comfortable so you can have an efficient power transfer so this is a concept of impedance matching and power transfer because of very high input impedance it draws very little current from the signal source these are the additional points because of very low impedance constant output voltage independent of the current can be had now so we have discussed high voltage gain high significance of high input impedance low output impedance the advantages of this we have discussed now coming to large bandwidth you know what is bandwidth sorry do you know what is bandwidth it is the range of frequencies for which you will get a constant output voltage so this is going to be my bandwidth we'll call it lower cut off frequency upper cut off frequency etc so this is in fact a diagram uh, for a c amplifier usually but if it is going to be a op amp i'm going to have this constant gain region for up to say 1 mego or 3 mego comfortably so if i'm using a op amp i'll get a good bandwidth that is my gain will remain constant for a large range of frequency from hertz to megahertz so that is in fact a advantage is point to be noted now coming to other points that is high common mode rejection ratio this is a parameter important for op amp i'll just hint what it is common mode rejection ratio cmr it is defined as the ratio of differential mode gain to common mode gain that is ad by ac you call it so it is the differential mode gain to common mode gain what do you mean by differential signal and common mode signal if i have if i have two voltages v2 and v1 here my common voltage level would be v1 plus v2 by 2 that is the average that is a common level for both these so that is my common mode signal now what is differential mode signal it's going to be v1 difference v2 so how much will this common mode signal be amplified 
that is the common mode that is a common mode game and how much this differential mode signal will be amplified that is going to be my differential mode gain so cmrr is differential mode gain divided by common mode gain and actually you need the cmr cmrr to be a very high value why because actually we don't want the common mode signal to be amplified we want the difference mode amplification this is where i my example would fit in that where i discussed a uh, three input three microvolt input here and two microvolt input here so the difference is what i wanted 2 milli 2 microvolt was my error signal noise signal my signal actual signal was only 1 microvolt maybe it is a output of a sensor 1 microvolt it is that voltage that i want to amplify so what i want is differential mode gain should be high rather than the common mode gain so you can appreciate why you need cmrr to be high ideally speaking you want the cmrr to be infinite practically you need it to be high that's all you can say now coming to the next point infinite slew rate now the question is what is slew rate to expect infinite slew rate ideally or here i should have put it as high slew rate please excuse me high slew rate here ideally infinite slew rate slew rate is a measure of how fast an output signal changes with respect to input signal that is if i have a square wave input you know in a square wave within no time it goes from zero level to a maximum level the square wave and similarly it goes down at the pulse where maximum to minimum within no time so it's a fast response square wave but you cannot expect the op amp to respond in a similar fast manner because the op amp consists of many capacitors and other time dependent circuits uh, elements hence the output will not change exactly as fast as your input so there you will experience a uh, lag of output with respect to your input slightly it is uh, volts per microsecond the unit is volts per microsecond so it will be a very small issue when it comes to fast changing signals at this point i would like to ask for some feedback is there any doubt that i should clarify can i continue sir you can continue yes yes okay yes yes you can continue ma'am okay thank you sir so this is what we discussed just now input resistance infinite ideally typically i would put it as 10 raised to 9 to 10 raised to 12 ohm input current i didn't hint to this i'll come back we'll discuss this output resistance zero ideally typically 100 to 1000 ohms gain infinite ideally gain practically between 10 raised to 5 and 10 raised to 9 it's going to be a very high value this we are speaking of open loop gain we'll come back to it common mode gain zero that is uh, ideally we don't want the common mode signal to be amplified but practically there it will have a slight small value of say can raise to minus 5 it is really insignificant then bandwidth infinity you ideally expect but 
Practically, after a few megahertz, it will get attenuated. Slew rate, you want it to be infinity, definitely it, it will, you will have a high value for OPA. So these are the ideal and real cases. Now, coming to the mostly used IC, as far as we are concerned, IC741. So this is a OPA which you are going to deal in your lab. So OPA was nothing but an integrated circuit. We had an idea of its function and internal complexity of this IC, but it will look very simple. This IC741 is an IC with eight pins, as you can see in this 3D video. Two and three pins here, I can show you. It's an eight pin IC. The two and three are going to be your differential inputs. So two is inverting, I'll call it. We'll explain what it is. I'll call this input as inverting input. I'll call this as non-inverting input. You give your biasing at four and seven. Seven is your plus VCC. Four is going to be your minus VCC. These are the biasing. You need to give a power for this IC or else you cannot expect it to work as an amplifier. So this is a biasing power, seven plus VCC minus VCC four. Then always your output is at six for this IC. Sixth pin will give you the output. Now coming to offset null one and five, now I'll superficially tell that it is meant for adjusting small error values in the output, even when there is no input given. Slight adjustment so that when you don't give you an input, you don't expect an output. So for that purpose, you use this. You can for the present neglect these pins. Now eight, pin eight, it is just for completion. You don't have any connection internally or externally for the spin 8 of 741. It is just for the sake of completion of 8. You can take it that way. Because ICs always come as 8 pin, 16 pin, 32 pin, and so on. You don't have an IC with 7 pin. So once again here, 7 is the supply. This is how you draw the OPA. Two is your inverting input. Three, third pin is your non-inverting input. Six is your output. And four is your minus VCC. Hope it is clear. When we do the experiment with this, it will be comfortable if you can remember this pin configuration. Two and three input, six output. Four and seven biasing. So this is the internal circuitry of IC741, it's a bit complicated. You don't have to bother about it. I just give you an idea. The first stage will be a differential amplifier stage, which we discussed. And last stage will be a push-pull stage. These intermediate stages help you to amplify the signal more and more that finally you will get an amplification factor in the order of 10 raised to 5. So this is IC741. This is another IC, LM324, In fact, I just wanted to highlight that this IC doesn't have a minus VCC, but it works with plus VCC and ground is enough. If this is plus 15 volt, this can be zero. You don't need a 12 power supply. There are ICs like that also. I just wanted to mention, that's all. Now let me come to the open loop gain and closed loop gain. Ma'am, there is a doubt in the chat box about pin five. Yeah. Can you read out the doubt because it's in the presentation mode now? She just said pin five. I think she need, I mean, more clarity. Oh, can I leave out pin five? Let me just check up. Uh, pin five is offset null. Offset null is one and five. I explained it as, if you don't give an input to an IC, still there may be an error signal output. And you don't expect 
that. You don't want that. So for that, you will nullify it with some other signal. It is internally compensated as far as IC741 is concerned. So you don't really give connections over here in a practical purpose. That is why I said you can just understand it as offset null and neglect it for the superficial class. Hope it is clear. Should I repeat? Is is it okay? uh, uh, Athena Joshi, is it clear for you? Are you there? Okay, okay ma'am, you can continue. Okay, thank you. So coming to open loop, what do I mean by open loop? Open loop just means that there is no feedback system here. Closed loop means there is a feedback system. What is feedback? Feedback means a part of your output is fed back to your input. Here, a part of your output is fed back to the input. So this is a feedback provision. Why do you need feedback? That is a question. OPAM is usually operated in a feedback because you know that the open loop gain, that is without feedback, the gain is going to be immensely high that you will not be able to work with it in the open loop game. So you would give a feedback connection like this so that it's easy for you to handle the game within your expected range. Moreover, you know that this is negative feedback. So you know the advantages of negative feedback that you would have covered in some other portion of your syllabus. That is, in fact, uh, it increases the bandwidth, it decreases your output impedance, it increases your input impedance. Uh, it in fact decreases your voltage gain. Here it decreases from a very high value to a practically comfortable gain value with the help of feedback. So this is the open loop and this is going to be the closed loop configuration where there is feedback. So hope the concept of open loop and closed loop is clear. Here you don't give any feedback from the output to input. Here you give a feedback from the output to input. It has got many advantages like improvement in input and output impedance, increase in bandwidth, frequency response. Then what did I say? Though there is, a, and in this case, decrease in voltage gain, which is what comfortable for us in this op-amp matter. Now coming to the next. Here is a beautiful concept of virtual ground as well as op-amp is concerned. What is virtual ground? See this word. This now we are in a virtual we field era, I must say, of COVID-19. So virtual tool, virtual class, everything is virtual. But OPAM already has this virtual ground here. You know what is ground? This terminal is connected to ground, I can say. Okay, this is a real ground, I would say. I would like to call this point as a virtual ground. It is not really connected to ground. It is not connected to ground, but it has the same potential as that of ground. So I would like to call this as virtual ground. So I would like to call this as virtual ground. I repeat, it is not really connected to ground, so I call it as virtual. But it has the same ground potential, so I call it as a ground. Hope it is clear. Then how can I call this virtual ground? You know that the input impedance of this op-amp is going to be very high. That would mean no significant current flows into this input circuit. So if this is a ground potential, and you know that no current, significant current is going to flow through this because of the high impedance. You can say 
Why current is not flowing? Because A and B are at the same potential. If A and B were at different potentials, you know that a current would flow. A potential difference would make a current flow. But now no current is or no significant current, I would say, no significant current flows from A to B because it has a very high impedance. The current that is flowing will be only in nanoamperes range. It's really insignificant or not prominent. So under that condition or under that concept, we can interpret that the point A the same has the same potential as that of point B. And that is why this can be called as virtual ground because B is grounded, B is in zero potential, A is also under the same potential of B. So you can say A is also under a ground but a virtual ground. So hope this concept is clear. This is very important in describing or explaining the properties or functioning of OPAMP. This is kind of, then well, one question. How would you differentiate what is the difference between a virtual ground and a real ground? First thing, it is not really connected to ground. The second difference I would say, a real ground will act as a sink for infinite current. That is, any amount of current will go to the real ground. You know that. When lightning happens, uh, any amount of current flows to, to the earth. But in a virtual ground, it is not an infinite sink of current. So that is another difference that I would like to mention. Now coming to the inverting op-amp. Inverting op-amp, this is a feedback system. This is the input resistance. This is the feedback resistance. So here you are giving the input at this terminal. This is pin number two for IC741. This is inverting mode of operation. That is, if you put a signal sine wave over here as an input, it will get inverted at the output. It will become a cause wave. So hope you got the concept of inversion. So if you give a sine wave, you will get a cos wave. It will get, sorry, uh, this is inversion and the output minus of it. I'll give you an explanation after you see the video. So this is V out is equal to minus V in RF by RN. Here, RF and RN are the resistors, feedback resistor and the input resistor. Now, this is a non-inverting mode. Here, what I have done is, I have grounded this pin and I have given my signal at the non-inverting terminal that is pin 3 of 741. So here, there is no phase difference between your input and the output. So if this will be the shape of your input, the same will be the shape of your output here. While in the other case, if this is your input, the output will be out of phase by 180 degree. Now, I would like to share a video at this stage because this is an experiment that is included in your uh, course. So, just a minute. Okay. 
inverting amplifier. This is the breadboard. All these vertical points, that is, the, these five holes make one point. The next five holes make another point and so on. So there are altogether 60 points here. And coming to this part, all these horizontal points make one point. These horizontal points make another point. So in, on this breadboard, we'll make a circuit. This is the IC741. You can see a glare point here. This will be pin number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these pins we will introduce into eight different points on the breadboard and introduce it like this. This is one ohm resistance. This I will introduce as R1 and this is RF 10 kilo ohm resistance. This is an inverting amplifier circuit. R1 we have taken as 1 kilo ohm and it will be given at terminal pin 2. From there an RF 10 kilo ohm will be given to the output terminal 6. 7 and 4 are plus VCC and minus VCC. 3 is the pin that is to be grounded. So signal will be here and output will be at 6. I will give the biasing. I use the red for plus VCC that I am giving at 7. I will use a color code of green for minus VCC that I will connect it at 4, leg 4. Then I will give the input. I will use the color code yellow for input. That I have to give at 2, that is the beginning of the resistor at 2. Then the negative of this input, I'll put it on ground. Then output, I'll use the color code orange, that I'll give it at 6. Then the negative to the ground, I mean output ground, then the terminal 3, I have to earth it, I'll ground the terminal 3 with white color code, I've grounded the third leg, so the connections are over, I will give the input between this yellow and white, that is white I have used for ground, two is the input yellow, output is orange six and it's ground to the CRO, biasing, red and gray, that is plus VCC and minus VCC, plus VCC at seven, minus VCC at four. Now I would also like to observe the signal in the CRO, so we will take another connection parallel to the input, so LO, another LO to the CRO first channel to observe the input and the negative to the ground. So my circuit is done. This is the biasing unit, plus VCC and minus VCC of 15 volt is provided from this. This is the CRO. Here we are using the two channels of CRO. The first channel, we have given the signal to observe the signal. The second channel, I have used for the output from six of the IC pin. So the two channels of CRO. Now the signal, I am, I am giving from the signal generator. This is a card and this I have connected to the input signal generator. This is a dwell power supply. The positive is connected to pin 7 of IC and minus VCC minus is connected to pin 4 of the IC. This is a signal generator. We'll be taking a sine wave from this. For convenience, I'm taking a 1 kilohertz frequency sine wave 
of 20 millivolt voltage. So this is the BNC connector from the sine wave generator and it will be connected to the input pin 2 of the IC. This is a CRO. Here we will use the first channel to observe the input and the second channel to observe the output. So this is our input. This is given to the channel 1. This is channel 1 input. And now I'll include channel 2 also. This is channel 2 signal. That is the output coming from pin 6. Now you can see that the input and output are out of phase. The in output is out of phase with the input. So this is how you will get the phase inversion in inverting amplifier. Now we will convert this inverting amplifier into non-inverting amplifier. All we have to do is remove the signal from this pin 2 and connect it over 3. Here we had connected the 3 to ground. Instead, we will connect this point to ground. So this will give you finally the non-inverting amplifier where 2 is grounded and the input signal is given at the point 3. So we will convert this inverting amplifier into non-inverting. Remove this input signal yellow wire. Remove the ground from the point 3. Instead, ground the point 2. Then, give the input signal yellow wire for color notation at 3. I would like to observe the signal in the CRO also. So, I will give one more yellow wire from 3 for the CRO. So the circuit is complete now. Pin 2 is grounded. I've given provision for input at terminal pin number 3. So this is channel 1. I have given the input to observe to the CRO. That is channel 1 signal. And now I'll include channel 2. So this is the output in channel 2. You can see that the input and output is in phase here. That is one sine wave overlaps with the other sine wave exactly. That is input and output are in phase with each other. So hope you could understand the video. Was it comfortable? Hello, can I have a response? Hello. Okay. Thank you. So now you have understood how an inverting amplifier works and a non-inverting amplifier works. That is, now you have to also think about the expression for your output voltage or gain in the case of inverting as well as non-inverting mode. So let me use my white board here. Is the board clear? Yes, ma'am. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. So this is my inverting mode of amplification, in inverting amplifier. This is R1, the input resistance, RF, the feedback resistor, which we did in a practical circuit. By C, input here, output there. This is grounded. And point A is a virtual ground. Remember that? Point A is a virtual ground. Now, here, if I denote this as current I in, current flowing through this circuit is I in, when I give a signal here, V in, and I call this as I F. 
This is the feedback current. So you know that very little nano ampere current flows into the op amp. It's insignificant with respect to this I in and I F. So as far as op amp is concerned, I can write I in is equal to or approximately equal to I F. Hope you got the logic. The input impedance of op amp is very high. So all the current that is flowing through the input circuit will flow through the feedback circuit. Because the op amp draws very little of current. So you can write IM equals IF and this is going to be the law for all the derivations regarding op amp. Okay. So let's write. Let's try to find out what is I in, what is I F, then equate it, then rearrange it to get your gain. That will be uh, the principle adopted, method adopted for all the derivations here. Is there any glare? Is it? Uh, can you see the screen clearly? Uh. Actually, it's out of focus now. It is out of focus. Uh, without this, uh, let me see. Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. Okay. So, I, how will we find out I? For convenience, I call this point B, this point A, this point C. So I in is a current flowing through R1. So just I is V by R, you know. So it is voltage across this R divided by R. So I in is V B minus V A by R1. That is current is voltage by resistance. Voltage across this R is V B minus V A. So that is what I've written, VB minus VA by R1. Now, you know that this VA is virtual ground. It's going to be zero. So my expression would reduce to V in by R1. Now, let us evaluate what is IF. IF is the voltage across RF divided by RF. I is volt. Current is voltage by resistance. So voltage across RF, I would say VA minus V out. So this side it is VA, that side it is V out. So VA minus V out by RF. So this is my expression. And here you know VA is going to be zero virtual ground. So my expression is finally going to be minus V out, minus V out by RF. Now we will equate I n equals I f. So we are going to get V in by R1 is equal to minus V out by R f. Okay. So on rearranging, V out by V in is equal to, that is our gain, voltage gain. V out by V in will be equal to minus RF by R1. In the video, I have actually left out this minus sign. Please excuse me uh, that equation. I just noticed that when it was played. So it is AV is equal to minus RF by R1. So in that experiment, we should we will measure RF and R1 and get the expected gain. And practically, we will measure in CRO what is the magnitude of the output signal and what is the magnitude of the input signal, then calculate your experimental gain. Okay, that is part of that experiment actually. So hope it is clear. The basic concept for CRO derivations would be IN is equal to IF. IN is the voltage, sorry, current flowing through this resistor 
VB minus VA by R1. IF is VA minus V out by RF. So you'll get two equations. Remember to use the concept of virtual ground VA is zero. Then equate it, you will get it. So hope it is clear. Now coming to the inverting, non-inverting, non-inverting mode. So all I have to do was give my signal over here, earth it, then directly earth this. So this is going to be my situation. So let me Let's do it. So IN is equal to voltage across R1 by R1, isn't it? So what do you think? But here, it is a ground over here. So I will put it VA minus VB. Because this is a ground point now. Initially, this was a virtual ground point. Now this is a real ground. So I would like to put it as VA minus VB by R1. Okay. And now you know VA. Now how will you interpret this potential at A? What is the potential at C? It is V in. Potential at C is V in. So A will also have the same potential. That is why no current flows through it. Isn't it? High input impedance. So I can say the voltage at A point is also V in. So V A, I will put it as V in. What about V B? B is grounded. So I put this as zero. So finally, my expression is going to be V in by R1. Now I F. It is a voltage across RF by RF. So here, what is the situation? I'll put it as V out minus VA by RF. So now I will equate I in equals IF. So what will be the equation? V in by R1 is equal to V out minus V A by R F. Okay, now rearrange it. What we want is V out by V. Okay, rearrange this. Then you will get one plus R F by R one. So this is the expression of gain of a non-inverting amplifier when there is feedback. Okay, the first inverting mode, it was minus RF by R1, and here it is one plus RF by R1. So comparing the first, I'll write the first equation that is inverting mode, it was ABF is equal to minus RF by R1. Let us just compare the advantage of Inverting mode with non-inverting. Here you can see always the gain here will be one plus something. So the gain is always going to be more. You cannot have uh, output less than the less than your input in this case. But here, if you adjust your R1 and R F, you can have a gain less than one also. Hope you understood. In with this equation, you can have a value less than one. With this equation, you can only have a value greater than one. Hence, this is more useful for us. Inverting mode is more useful for us. Though there will be an inversion for the signal, 180 degree phase shift between the input and output. On many situations, we will prefer this. Okay. So hope it is clear. 
this inverting and non-inverting, then my next application would be, I share the screen. Inverting, non-inverting is over. Now next is the summing amplifier. That is here, when you give various inputs V1, V2, V3, with the same logic that I in equals I F, you can derive this, we will do that. Then the next aim would be difference amplifier. That is finding out the difference between the two input so your final output will be V2 minus V1 in this case. That is, you have to find out what is your signal here. Multiply it with the expression for inverting gain. Then evaluate what is the voltage, effective voltage here. Multiply it with non-inverting gain. And then find the final output. Then yeah, you get as then this is an integrator. You give a, here, the feedback element is replaced by a capacitor. So you will have to evaluate what is the current through this capacitor. So this is R and C here, integrator. So in an integrator, you know that when you give a, uh, when you give a sine wave, you get a minus cos, isn't it? So a sine wave, you get a cos wave. So that way you will see in CRO. Now coming to differentiator, here the feedback element is R, but the input element is C. Then your output will be the differential of the input signal. You can see it here, output is equal to minus RC dV in by dt. If I have time, I can explain this differentiator, integrator, and summing circuit with the simple logic that I in equals IF. With the same logic, you can explain all these circuits. Then there is this voltage follower. There I will stop it. So if time permits, I will go for the derivation of integrator and differentiator. So can you give me a feedback? Should I go for it or not? Ifana, can I have a feedback? Should I go for the derivation of integrator, differentiator, summer circuit, and so on? Sir, what is uh, Ifana, I think uh, uh, now the time is 11.40. Teacher, uh, how long do you take for the derivation? Uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, sir. Because, uh, uh, okay, you can 10. continue. Ah, because it's, it's an all in, in the syllabus, right? this all the topics. Yeah, it is there. It is there. So you, can, you can you can continue. Okay, then I will continue with the summer circuit. How to derive it? So, in the summing circuit, we are what we are doing is we will give many input. I will move all this. So this is my. First voltage input, V1 to R1, then another voltage I have got V2 that I will send through R, okay, this is R1, R, V2, R2, and I will give another voltage. V3, I want to add this. 
and I'll apply it across R3. Okay, R1, R2, R3. I'll give it to this inverting point. These are the various input voltage which I want to add and get it here. So here also, as I said, my sim our simple logic would be IN is equal to IF. Current through this will be equal to current flowing through this. So how will I write for total current I? It is sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3. My total current I in. So I in is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. That will be equal to I1 I can write as voltage by resistance. So V1 by R1 plus V2 by R2 plus V3 by R3. Okay. Now what about IF? IF, you know it is by the initial notation, I would take VA minus V out. VA minus V out by RF. So here VA is the virtual ground point. So VA is zero. So it will be minus V out by RF. Okay. So we will equate this to This is the input current. I will equate it to the theta current minus V out by RF. Equate it. So you will get V out is equal to, on rearranging this, V out is equal to minus RF by R1, V1 plus V2 plus V3. Okay, so your output voltage is going to be sum of input voltages. Of course, with a negative sign. So you can apply it to another OPAM if you want to just invert it once again. Okay, or else this output is a sum of output is a sum of input voltages with a negative sign. Now, what if I take this? Rf equals R1. Rf equals R1. If I take it like that, then what will be my V out? V out is equal to minus of V1 plus V2 plus V3. That is what I said. It is a sum of the input voltages. Output is sum of input voltages. Now, what if I take Rf by R1 is equal to the number of inputs N? If I've got three inputs here, this will be my three, n equals three. So this would become three. So my output voltage would become by three. Rf by R1, if it is three, then this is going to be my averaging circuit. That is, you will get an output which is equal to the average of the input voltages. So all you have to do is make your RF by R1 equal to 1 by N, where N is the number of inputs, so that you will get an uh, averaging circuit. So that much about summing circuit. Now we have our integrator and then differentiator. Integrator, as we discussed, the feedback element is a capacitor instead of a resistor. Here you have your resistor. You give your signal here. This is earth. So this is a situation. I'll call this A, B, C, as I did earlier. Now, again, what I'm going to evaluate is IN equals IF. IN is a current flowing through this, and the whole current flows through the feedback. 
So I n equals I f. So let me evaluate what is I in I in since this is an AC I will get, uh, I R I will put it because a reactive element is present here. So small letter I will use I R voltage across this resistor is equal to V B minus V A by R. V A is zero. So this is going to be V in by R. Now voltage across capacitor. Voltage across capacitor would be V A minus V out. So actually V out is the voltage across this capacitor itself. So I will write V A minus voltage across this capacitor that you can give, get as V A is zero. So I can interpret it as minus V C, minus of the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. So now you have to evaluate what is the IF, IF is the current through capacitor, am I right? Feedback current is the current through this capacitor, IC. So how will you evaluate IC? In a capacitor, you know that C is equal to Q by V, that is in the differential form, I would write as DQ by DT. DQ was I DT, Oh, DVI. Oh, sorry, DQ by DV. Okay. So therefore, I C, I can write it as C DV by DT. Just rearrange it. And you know that I C is going to be this voltage across this capacitor or V out is going to be minus. So in this case, it is minus C D P by D. Capacitor voltage is minus V C. So that is one. So I got an expression for I C. I got an expression for I R. Now I will equate it. This stage you can avoid if you don't want. Just write it directly. Now equate these two. So what am I going to get is. V in by R is equal to minus C D V zero by D T. So rearrange it. V zero is equal to minus one by R C integral zero to T. V in dt. So this is the expression for output of uh, integrator. Hope it is clear. Now I'll just touch upon differentiator also. Here it is a capacitor when it comes to differentiator. Here it is a resistor when it comes to a. Now we are discussing differentiator. So we have got an expression for IC. We will use it. Here, IR. You can just do it once again, VA minus V out by VA minus V out by R. This is R. V out is zero, so it is minus V out by R. It's the same procedure, just be careful with the values, that is all. So I see we have already done it earlier. It is C dV in by dt. Now equate I R equals I C. So I'll just write it over here. C D V in by D T. 
just equate it, rearrange it, and you will get V out is equal to R will go that side, so minus RC TV in by DT. So this will be our expression for output of a differentiator. Here you can say when you give a triangle wave, you will get a square wave. On the other hand, if it is an integrator, when you give a square wave, you will get a triangle wave. The opposite operation will happen over here. So that is a, you can also try it with sine wave and cos wave in your practical experiment. So I think I've kept my timeline. So is there any questions that I should answer or clarify something? It would be my pleasure. Students, now it's your turn. You can ask doubts regarding this topic, OPAM. Irfana, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, students, you can use, uh, use chat box. Otherwise, you can uh, unmute your mic. You can ask directly to the uh, uh, ma'am. Please unmute your, unmute your mic. Or as sir said, put it in the chat box so that I can help you if I can. If I'm not till now, was there were there any doubts which I should attempt? No, ma'am. Yeah, there is one doubt. Gain limiting frequency. Adina Joshi is again asking about gain limiting frequency. Okay, gain limiting frequency would be uh, concerned with the capacitance value. As in a P amplifier. You know that their gain is limited by the capacitor's response. Okay. So the capacitance value will limit the gain, the value of the capacitor. Okay. Then. Hope that the doubt is, doubt is clear. Because ma'am, you already explained all, well, explainly all the things uh, in very, uh, in, Neatly manner. That's why there is no doubts at all. Infana, okay. <laughs> that's a compliment. No, no, yes, yeah. Explain all, all the things uh, very clearly because you have used uh, your um, white screen and you have used their uh, video presentation. All the things are used is one and a half hour. That's why. Okay, thank you, sir. Actually, sir, I'm uh, planning to do some uh, videos also. I'll be posting in uh, YouTube. Few have already done, and I'm okay, okay. Uh, working on a uh, few of the videos. Okay. Uh, so that uh, it will be useful for the students Surely. in this uh, situation of pandemic. Okay. I've shared the link. I'll share the link in the chat box. Yeah. Okay, it's very uh, I've only done few, but in the near future, I'll be posting few more, I hope. Okay, okay. Mostly the first time the chemistry students and uh, I think complementary students all are getting to the stream. But uh, I think this uh, these topics are very useful only for core students. Right? Yeah, uh. exactly. Uh, actually, my students had asked me to do some revision on the uh, first year and second year lab experiments also. Mm -hmm. So I'm also working on that now rather than the final year because their exams are coming up. Okay. okay. So, it's very useful for this in this pandemic. It's, uh, this okay. lectures. Yeah. Uh, so you actually, Charlie Karapen, sir, has also done many videos. So I'm trying to complement his uh, videos. That is, whichever he has not done. I okay. think I try to attempt it so that uh, uh, students can make a benefit out of both. Okay, okay. Irfana, any more doubts? Uh, no, sir. Okay. okay. I so think it's clear. Okay. So now we can wind up the session. Okay. So can I start with the answer? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. So finally, it's my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of Elegant College of Arts and Science to all the wonderful ones who contributed to this program. First of all, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our resource person, Dr. Lakshmi, for providing a wonderful session to our students. 
and I would like to thank Dr. Isaac sir, our principal, for conducting such wonderful sessions to all to our students in the form of elegant webinar series. I would like to thank all the teachers for their support. And finally, uh, heartfelt thanks to all the active participants. I hope you made use of this webinar to the maximum. So once, once again, thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Rana, for giving me this opportunity. And a special thanks to Principal uh, Sir, because uh, it is always my pleasure to teach. So this was a wonderful experience for me to have students from various colleges, I believe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.